Hello and welcome to Nerd vs. World episode 80, Nerd Covenant. I'm Brendan. <laughs> and I'm Spindles. And on this week's episode, we have reviews of Alien Covenant uh, and Colossal, our, U- our top tips for the UK Games Expo uh, in a couple of weekends, and Spindles is going to MCM next weekend, uh, and then a list of the cancelled and renewed shows. And yeah, and some of the, the new pilots to get excited about for next season before they get cancelled too. <laughs> Sorry. Right, well, let's launch into it, sir. Like, I, I, I've been dying to hear, so <laughs> go ahead. Okay, I've put a note on my show notes to say um, plot outline first, exclamation <clears throat> mark, exclamation mark, to stop me from diving straight into straight the Straight into the why it's shit. Yeah. Right, okay. Okay, so uh, we are ten years after the events of Prometheus, the colony ship Covenant has been sent out to. A, a new planet. Uh, there's a crew of about fifteen who are currently in hypersleep, and then like two thousand people in, in like the, the cargo, okay. as, as well as embryos for future colonization. And yeah, Walter the android is looking after the ship when it suddenly gets hit by uh, a solar flare that causes a lot of damage, and there had been a crew out of hypersleep and. When they're out repairing the ship, they intercept a message, which is um, from the end of Prometheus, I think. I only saw that film once because I hated it so much. But it is... What's her name? Numi Rapat. That's the one. Playing uh, Country Roads. They intercept that signal. Mm-hmm. So they also they veer off to this new planet and set down and everything goes crazy. Okay, so they land on the same planet they landed on in Prometheus. No, they land on the planet that David and uh, Numa Rapace's character Mm -hmm. crashed on once they left the planet in Prometheus. Which turns out to be an engineer homeworld because there's some weird backstory bits where David unleashes their virus on the entire populace of the the engineer's homeworld and wipes them all out. Of course, as he does. One of the one of the few interesting things about the entire film and it's glossed over in a five minute flashback okay um and yeah so from there they land on the planet and they get split up and things start to go wrong you have two characters become infected and actually at this point in the film I'm kind of enjoying it there is some genuine sense of terror being built up and the body horror bits when they come are really gross Mm-hmm. They're exactly what you'd want for an alien film. They're not quite as iconic as the chestburster scene, but seeing a Neomorph jet out of someone's back is still pretty grim. And then it all just goes a bit wrong, because David turns up, and then David and Walter start getting into about the idea of free will and creation and what it's like to create something from, from nothing and that responsibility of being a god, more or less. And there's a little reveal that David, in his time on this planet, is the one who has crafted the egg that we know and the face hugger. And he's been missing one vital piece of his experiment, and that's a human. A human host. Right. Yeah. So that, that that's the part where it lost me. I was like, no, why why explain that way where the egg came from? The whole point of Alien was it was unknown. That's why it was scary. As soon as you start giving it a background and an origin, one as bullshit as that, it takes the horror out of it. And then he infects someone. They have a chestburster come out, which is more or less a fully grown alien rather than a chestburster. And it stands there and more or less fucking salutes him. And then we never see it. You know, right? Like, like, this, this is 15, 20 minutes before the end. Okay. Now you've got all the way through like an hour and a half of film until you finally see the xenomorph. That's only ever used as an afterthought after that. Okay. The film had completely lost me by that point. With her, and oh, there's a really, really weird scene. We have Walter and David together, both fast vendor, Um and David is teaching Walter how to play the flute. 
and he says the line, uh, you just blow, I'll do the fingering. And I was just like, that's, that's going on a meme <laughs> somewhere. That's just ridiculous. And the thing they play is the Prometheus theme. Okay. Like, okay, so the Prometheus theme song, which is clearly in the audience's POV, is now canon inside its own universe. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, the film, had, the film by that point had lost me. Like all the all the good character stuff that the prologues and trailers have been teasing, completely wasted. Like there isn't one bit of it in the actual film. They are all completely expendable and pointless. Only Danny McBride as Tennessee is memorable. That's because he made that role his. It wasn't the way it was written, it's the way that he performed it. Right. And so that's the only standout from it. But the rest of it is just like it was really, really bad. But it had promise. It's kind of more frustrating than Prometheus. Prometheus was just shit, but this had the chance to be something better. It's just a, and it just ended up a perfectly average movie. Right. I was, okay. Disappointing yeah, then. Re- disappointed because it looked like they might have changed things around. Mm. But yeah. And the twist that comes at the end is well, it's just, well, it's, it's obvious. David and Walter have a fight, and you think that the good androids got onto the ship at the end. But, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. the bad one. And then he goes off and he starts um, replacing the embryos on the ship with face huggers. Right. Yeah, oh, great. So there's another one coming. Uh, but yeah, it's just so full of holes. I think I've said a lot on Twitter that, like, angsty androids do not an alien film make. You know? No, no, very true. There's a pretty set formula for an Aliens film. And I, I think we're going to take a crack at correcting this franchise next time, right? <laughs> yeah, apparently so. But, yeah, no. For that, it's just disappointing. No, fair enough. Still a better film than Prometheus? Well, I, I, I hardly think in your opinion they could have made a worse one, so... <laughs> but, yeah. Luckily, I saw another film in the last week called Colossal. Which made me forget all about how bad Covenant was. The class was actually very good, and then not it, it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be from the trailers. Have you seen anything about it? No, no, I know nothing about it at all. Right. So Colossal is this new Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis movie. Um Anne Hathaway plays this character Gloria, and in the trailers you see that she goes back to her hometown struggling with alcoholism, and then for some reason there's a connection between her and a monster that appears in Soul that keeps mimicking her actions. And it looks... Yes, now, yeah. now I have seen the trailer for that, yes. And the setup from the trailer, it makes it look like it's kind of a comedy film. Like, it's a monster movie, but a comedy film at the same time. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, it is. But, like, the first, the first two acts, it's exploring this idea where the monster is clearly meant to be a metaphor for her struggles with alcoholism. And there's a connection to a part of her hometown it only ever appears when she's there so this park in her hometown has ties to her background and her, and her history whenever she's there this monster appears in Seoul okay. it turns out that Jason Sudeikis also has something that manifests when he's in that park and he has this, this robot that comes alive and um, for the most part you've got this kind of this comedy element as they're testing what happens to do certain things and you know she goes out and she dances and she waves and stuff but then it turns really suddenly in a manner that I wasn't expecting. And it becomes a story about controlling and abusive relationships. And it goes from being a comedy to becoming this really quite taut thriller. Uh, with Jason Sudeikis trying to control and have a character, Gloria, because they've been. Well, they've known each other since childhood, and he's always had this thing for her. Mm-hmm. And sh- she goes off with one of his friends for a night. He finds out, and then he just turns. And he goes from being this funny, nice guy to being this utter dick, but with this front on him that I'm sure you see in people all the time. It makes it a really horribly recognisable character. If you've had any friends in any sort of relationship like that, you, you can spot this guy. Um, and he threatens her that if she tries to leave he will go to that park every day as his robot 
and destroy Sol. Okay. Yeah. And there's this horrible scene where she stops him and they have this fight and obviously in Sol there's this giant monster fighting a giant robot and the crowd are cheering and he puts her down and it cuts just to the park and she's lying on the floor and he's stamping on the ground around her deliberately stamp, just stamping onto that monster you find in playgrounds mm. not damaging anything in the playground but obviously out in Sol mm. he's wreaking all kinds of havoc and it becomes like it's almost like the destruction the monsters cause in Sol is the physical manifestation of the emotional and mental trauma that comes from these sort of relationships. Right, okay. So it, this, like, and that metaphor gets pushed along. I mean, there's metaphors all the way through. The monster is clearly one thing, then another. The destruction is clearly this sort of emotional turmoil. Mm. Um, but Jason Sudeikis and Anne Hathaway are so compelling in their roles that they, they, they carry it through. It's, it's an incredible film. Okay. It's cool. a really, really, really good film. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, from the trailer, I, I thought it just looked a bit cheesy, so... Uh, yeah, really so I, I, I saw it, take a look in the morning, mm. as I said, a cheesy monster mm. movie, and then, yeah, that third act twist, and I was just like, fuck. <laughs> wow, okay, cool. But yeah, I would highly recommend that. The thing is, it's not showing... Like, it wasn't showing my local view on my local Odeon. Mm. I had to travel 40 mile round trip to, to Rubri to go and see wow, it. Wow, okay. And cool. Empire. Um, but it's it's worth the journey. If you get a chance to go and see it, go and see it. It's worth it. Sweet. I'll have to check that out. But, trigger warning. If you've been in that kind of relationship or know someone who has, you know, you'll see some things. Okay, dokie. Cool. Next. That's reviews. I'm sure if there's anything I've seen recently. I think I've just been watching old stuff again uh, I'm, sad, I'm excited about Twin Peaks because Twin Peaks is back so I'm looking forward to watching that I've not seen it yet so I haven't seen it no, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to catching up on that 25 years later it'll be interesting to see how it's progressing um, so yeah, yeah that looks kind of cool you'll take Doctor Who? yes yes um, yeah uh, again I thought that this week's was it was another, another good episode. I, I think, again, the, the problem with this season is I think it, its endings are just letting down its, its shows. I don't think the endings of any of the episodes are being as strong as they could be. I don't know. I, they did get a little deus ex machina in, in the latest episode. Mm. And I might have forgave it a little bit because they did say um, extremist email at the start. So it was yeah. kind of difficult to see where it came in and out. I was okay with that. I'm worried because the first of a two-parter... Yes. And the second part looks kind of extravagant in terms of setup and stuff. Like, they've got the army guys in there. So I'm not sure, like, that could be the first death episode of the season. Mm. Um, but on the whole, I really enjoyed it. I thought the monsters were really worth exploring further. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I like the whole portal idea. I was just a bit sad that it turned out to be what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of portals all around the world going to places. Yeah. Well, well. And uh, American Gods. And yeah, American Gods is still going strength to strength. It wasn't the episode I thought it was going to be. No, I mean, I thought it was going to be. I thought they were going to get the carousel. Yes, I thought we were going to yeah. get to the carousel in this episode, but they essentially did an episode on Laura's backstory, which is cool. Yeah. And fleshed it out a hell of a lot more than it ever was in the book. So that yeah. that was really kind of nice. And it was it was interesting to see it all from from Laura's perspective, because. Yeah. I was kind of a bit disappointed that they hadn't revealed that it was Laura that saved him yeah. when it happened. Mm. Yeah. But now I understand why. Yeah, they, were, they were saving that. Yeah. I thought it was great. I love um, Betty Gilpin who plays Audrey. Yes. I love her and everything she's in. She was awesome in elementary. Um, but the, the scene in the bathroom. Yeah, when, when Laura comes back, that was fantastic. That was but then again, that does cause problems later down the line, I think, in terms of plot continuity. Okay. So the, I, I may well revisit this one later because I'm feeling that Audrey knowing what she knows now is going to cause some problems later on in the plot. Okay. When she reappears. Don't give anything away. But no, yeah. no. Don't no worry about that for now. But yeah, I, I was expecting the carousel, but yeah. that, that is yet to come. That should be next week's now. 
Hopefully so. That would be really good. It would be nice to see Churn and Bonga back again yeah. for another episode. And some more Mr. Nancy, hopefully. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing whether they're coming to America. In mm, well. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's, it's going from strength to strength. It's a fantastic series. Yeah. Um, and in new series news, I guess the big news was the uh, the Dark Crystal prequel. Yes. Which has come out of nowhere from yeah. Netflix. A, a, a massive left fielder. Mm. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. Why would you not? Yeah, be? indeed. It, um, I can't wait to see what they do. I, just, uh, I love the little teaser at the trailer with the new Jim Henson going over all of his art from the Dark Crystal. Mm. And I want to see more of that realised. Yeah, well, Brian Froud is involved in the yeah. conceptual design of it, as far as I'm aware, so it's it's from the same team. I'd, yeah, I'd be happy I'd be happy with that. Is, now, is it a prequel or is it... It's a ten-part prequel. Yeah. Prequel. So it's, okay. Yeah, so it's it's Gelflings before they all get exterminated. Okay, sweet. Is what I understand from, from the blurb that I've read so far. But yeah, massively. Netflix is just coming up with some corkers at the yeah. moment. Oh, I finally got to watching the LA. Yes. Yes, I really enjoyed that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed that. It. I, I, I guess my thoughts on it is it's essentially a modern day Flatliners, <laughs> which is being re- released. Which is coming is back it? as well. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that it, it's kind of it's Flatliners meets some kind of. I don't know, weird quasi-religious thing that we've not quite got onto yet. Yeah, well, there's a second season coming. Yes, yes. Um, but it, it didn't go where I expected it to go at the end, and I think that whole kind of <coughs> school invasion thing at the end kind of came a bit out of nowhere for me. It had been uh, heavily hinted at. I know it had been hinted at. Episode. Um but yeah, just it, it felt a bit out of place. I don't know. It was a little jarring, I think. But yeah. the rest of it I thoroughly enjoyed. I thought Jason Isaacs was awesome in it. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic as the scientist hack. He was genius. I mean most most of the scenes with him were really, really difficult to watch. Yeah. The experiments with the drowning was just, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gone back and revisited that series. I've watched the finale a couple more times, uh, but I haven't watched the episodes. Well, I've I, I, I watched the whole series through once, and then, because well, we watched the first couple of episodes with Megan, and then she'd gone to bed and we carried on watching it, and then we watched it all the next day when she was in Oxford, so we finished it, and then we went back again and watched a few more episodes with her, so it's interesting to re-watch a bunch of the stuff. So, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I, I'm, I enjoy it. Yeah. It's one of those shows that kind of piques my curiosity yeah. in the kind of, you know, it, it's that kind of slightly offbeat yeah. drama. They've got another one coming up um, called Glow, which I think it's a completely different sort of thing, but I'm looking forward to that. It's Alison Brie, and it is a wrestling uh, show. Okay. So it's Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling is what Chloe stands for. And it's all about uh, women's wrestling in the 80s. Okay. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, sounds interesting. That's on the Netflix show. Oh, yeah. cool. That's probably out this week. I'll probably review that in the next episode. Okay. Cool. Um, over the next couple of weekends, though, we've got a lot of conventions coming up. We have indeed. So you're at MCM this weekend. MCM this weekend, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be there this weekend doing a bunch of interviews and... Who are you going to be speaking to? How, um, how does am I going to be? Well, I, Friday, I think I'm down for uh, Sam J. Jones, Flash Gordon. That's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that immensely. Yeah. Uh, Nichelle Nichols from Star Trek. Yeah. Um, who else have we got? Uh, finally getting to speak to Chris Barry, because I didn't manage to catch him at the Sci-Fi oh, Weekender, yeah. so I'm hoping we'll speak to him this time round. Uh, then the main ones that you're going to be upset about is the, the Firefly... So it's uh, Summer Glau and uh, Sean May who we're talking to. And yeah. And then there's a big Star Wars panel, which is people from original Star Wars and Rogue One. And, yeah. 
Yeah, I might hate you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll be hopefully catching up with um, uh, Danny Ruer and Eric Christian Olsen from NCIS LA, because we were supposed to speak with them at the last one, but we didn't manage to talk to them, so hopefully we'll get to speak to them this time. Uh, oh, Sean Mayer. Oh, the name that I forgot the quiz a couple of years back. Yeah. He's haunted me ever since. I might have to tell him that. <laughs> well, I was so confident. Well, dude, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have forgotten that. I forgot who the Tyrell Corporation yeah, was. Come on, <laughs> true, yeah. and that one was recorded as well. <laughs> so yes, the, yeah, the, the, I'm not sure what else is going on at MCM this time around. I don't know whether there's any kind of screenings of things this time. Uh, I'll find out when I get the kind of full schedule next couple of days. Cool. But yes, if anyone's down there, then come say hi. Yeah. And the weekend after that, I am at the UK Games Expo. We're coming too. Yeah. Yeah, we're just coming on on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah. You'll be there the whole time, but we're just coming on on the Saturday. Amazing. So I thought I'd like get some tips together for people who haven't been to the expo before, um, and making this your first time. So I did write some stuff down. Like regular listeners to the show will know that I am phenomenally underprepared when it comes to making show notes. No. <laughs> I don't usually do it, but. <laughs> This episode, fuck you, I've done it. <laughs> so, game with top tips. Number one, be prepared. There is an awful lot to see, even more so this year than most, because they've got extra halls and a lot more gaming space. But they do have an app, so get the app. They do, um, yeah. And plan your, your day or your weekend around the app. Have an idea of what sort of games you're looking for. Uh, look into some of the game designers and find out where they are in the men hall and be prepared. Uh, two, dress for comfort. It might be raining outside when you get there, but it's a long walk to get to the halls and it'll be full of people. You will be hot and sweaty and sticky. So make sure you dress comfortably, wear sensible shoes and leave plenty of time to get places. One piece furry outfits will not go down yeah, well. No. <laughs> uh, take time out of your day to eat and drink. It's really easy at conventions to get caught up in the moment and forget to actually look after yourself. Uh, take a bag and take bottled water because it will be cheaper to bring it in from outside to get it inside. Um, number four, go to Thirsty Meeples. Yes, definitely. Go and see those guys. They are awesome. Um, they will be able to help you with any sort of questions about gaming and they will have with them their gaming library. Now how it's worked the last couple of years is you pay a tenner, you get given a loyalty card and they get, you get stamped when you take games out and when you finish for the day or when you leave, you hand the card back in, you get your tenner back. It's a returnable deposit. Um, but those guys are amazing. Uh, go and see them. And my final thing is experiment. If you're new to board games, this whole place is going to be a chance for you to find that one game that clicks with you. But even if you are already a gamer, you might be totally into strategy games, go and have a look at some puzzlers, you might be into card games, go and have a look at conventional board gaming, you might never done miniature gaming, check that out. Um, but also, role play. This is the biggest thing for me for my first Games Expo, was after walking the floor for seven, eight hours and board gaming, was then finding the role play section and buying a ticket for somebody else's game with a couple of friends and I do it every year now as a matter of matter of course. It's always fun. Um, so they'll be selling tickets during the day, they're usually like £4 each and that will get you into somebody's session. They will run a quick four hour game, not a quick four hour game, they run a four hour game for you and anybody else who buys a ticket and it's well worth checking out. So if role play is something you haven't done before and you've always been interested in it, use the expert's chance to experiment with that. Yeah, I know a couple of people are running games there this year, so yeah, go along and check them out. We played, I played a Pathfinder game a couple of years back, I played a, um, a sci-fi homebrew game last time out, I'm looking at a Cthulhu game this time. You can buy your tickets in advance on the Game Expo website as well, it's well worth doing. Um, and then they also have Nightmare Live and the MMORPG show there too. So you can buy tickets for that too. I think Dark Room is there again as well. Um, yeah. 
And in terms of my personal what recommendation... Room? What's that? Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm never living that one down. It's been three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, personal recommendations. Check out Osprey Games. They had my game of the year last year. Uh, the Wotan crew usually do something pretty big and extravagant. They had a bus for their last time out. And um, Big Potato Games um, do a lot of cool party games. So go and look at those. Uh, this year, I'm looking for kids' games and family games. We're actually going to have, for the first time in years, a proper full family Christmas this year. Awesome. So I'm looking for games to, spe- to, to play with the family for this Christmas. Uh, and I'm also really keen to see if Fantasy Flight have got any copies of Legend of the Five Rings living mm. card game. Because it's started to be advertised, no official release date yet. But if it's there, I want it. I want it and all the things that are connected to it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And if you see me, of course, uh, be sure to follow the Twitter and the Instagram. Um, I will be tweeting loudly and regularly throughout the convention. Come and find me and say hi. Yep, and we'll be around on Saturday as well. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, multiple days. Remember the the, the 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 key rule of conventions is the five two one rule. At least five hours sleep, two meals, and one, one shower. shower. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, so on to the last bit, which is the cancelled, renewed, and new shows. Yep. Surprise me, surprise me, surprise me with some of these cancelled shows. Okay, so what's been cancelled that we care about? Well, Black Mist Redemption's gone. Um, not, I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed because it, it kind of found its pace after a little while. Um, I think it needed longer than the eight episodes that it got to get into its story. Is that all it had? It was only eight episodes, okay. yeah. So it was like a mini-series and what happened was the Blacklist went off air when that came on. And then there was eight episodes of that, and then the blacklist came back again. So it was kind of weird, happened in the middle of the season. And it was interesting to explore Tom's past a bit, uh, and you know, it had some excellent actors in it, so Fan King Anson and people like that were in yeah. it, and it was it was an interesting show. Um, but yes, sadly, won't be back for more. Um, a couple that we, I think we talked about last year, but never actually, well, I've, I've never actually got around to watching, even though I have them all ready to watch. One is Brain Dead, which was apparently about aliens invading the White House and pretending to be politicians. I don't remember us talking about that. We definitely spoke about it. It was in our preview of shows from last year because I, I, I've got it on my drive, but I've never actually watched it. Uh, so that kind of says a lot about it. It didn't, hold, it didn't capture my attention that much and it's gone. Um, what else have we got? Emerald City has gone. Which I watched the first episode of and didn't really like at all. Emma yeah, I never watched it. Uh, Emma watched a couple of them and thought it was okay, but it was a, a kind of updated story of Oz, and it was a female cop and her canine unit that ended up getting whisked off to Oz, and it was all a bit weird. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's gone. Uh, Frequency is also gone, which is the one based on the, the kind of two thousand and something film about yeah. a woman who can. Uh, talk to people in the past through radio, and I, I watched the first couple of episodes of that, and it was it was okay. It was an interesting premise, but again, didn't hold my attention past the first couple of episodes. So again, not particularly surprised it's gone. Similarly, Pure Genius is another one that we spoke about. That was about a, a genius guy who gets brought into a hospital uh, to help save people and stuff. Uh, and again, I think we watched the first two or three episodes of that and then gave up so there's not really a whole lot of surprises um one sleepy hollow is gone is it gone though yes sleepy hollow has been cancelled um now i don't even know if it finished again we've got this season but i haven't actually watched it all Mm. uh i haven't really kept up on it since they did the bones crossover that was about the only the last time i watched sleepy hollow so again it's it's one that it, it was interesting, it had some good cast in it, some good moments over the yeah. years, you know, John Noble in it and yeah. that sort of thing, so, but yeah, that's also gone, and Son of Zorn is gone. Well, massive shock. Yeah. Colour me completely surprised. So. We were so wrong about that show, man. <laughs> we were, yeah. You we, know, thought we, we thought it'd be hilarious, yeah. 
And it really wasn't. No, nope, it really wasn't. I, mean, I think I persisted until about episode six, and then I was just like, yeah, no more of that. Yeah, no. That was... That was a disappointment. I was I had big thing, big big hopes for that, but just didn't didn't hold up to it at all. So there really isn't a whole lot that we spoke about last year that carried on for other seasons. <laughs> Somehow, you know, like MacGyver and Lethal Weapon and things like that are, are continuing by the looks oh, of it. Fuck me dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, both of which. Well, I think I I watched the end of MacGyver and it's cheesy and weird but I, I lost interest in Lethal Weapon there's a, a whole bunch of shows I've just kind of given up on this year so I, I, I'm not massively surprised at a whole load of the stuff uh, that, that's gone Murder in the First is gone uh, which was an interesting first season didn't like the second season quite so much that was Tom Felton from Harry Potter as a kind of a tech billionaire who was being accused of rape uh, no, never, never come across it uh, that was that was quite a good show. I enjoyed that. And then the second season was about uh, a school shooting. And then yeah, so they're all gone. Uh, a bunch of stuff that finished. Um, what finished? Bones has finished. Yep. Grimm's finished. Vampire Diaries has finished. They finally finished. Yeah, finally went away. Uh, Beauty and the Beast has finished. Uh, what else has gone? Black Sails has finished, and that was awesome. I was a very late comer to that and watched a whole load of it, and I, uh, up until the point where I think it was just about two weeks before the final episode aired that I just caught up with it. But that was excellent. Um, Halt and Catch Fire is ending. Really? Well, it's got one okay. more season. Um, the Leftovers is finishing. Longmire is finishing. Orphan Black is finishing. Was only an Isles finished. Uh, the Strain has one more season to go. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's wrapping up. That's cool. Last seasons of but, things this yeah, year. Yeah, the Strain should wrap up fairly soon. Yeah. That's good. Bates Motel is finished. Episodes is finishing the last season of that. Uh, yeah, and that that's sort of. Uh, yeah, I said the leftovers, did I? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's pretty much everything, I think. But, yeah. So, new stuff. Okay, so here's all the stuff that we're going to be talking about. It's been cancelled next year! <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm too cynical. Right, what have we got <coughs> coming up this year then? Uh, we have Wisdom of the Crowd on CBS. Jeffrey Tanner is a tech genius. When his daughter's murder goes unsolved, he creates a new social network to solve crimes, but can it solve his own daughters? Uh, that's got Jeremy Piven in it. Uh, yeah, kind of interesting. So, yes, uh, also from CBS is the Big Bang Theory spin off, you oh, and Sheldon. I'm so not looking forward to that. <laughs> Again, it's the thing with Alien. Why, why explain something? Let it just be. Yeah, indeed. Sheldon's a great character. Well, we've heard a lot about we've Sheldon's heard, childhood. Yeah, we don't need to see it. There's so much we know about Sheldon from. 10, 11 seasons of Big Bang Theory, that, you know, you've written yourself into a corner already. Because the trailer makes his dad look out to be a fairly nice guy. Mm. Nothing we've heard about his father yeah. in 11 seasons of Big Bang Theory supports that. So, I don't know that we need that show. Well, we don't. I mean, what am I saying? We don't need that show. But, there no, it is. It's, no, a, no. It's, a, it's, a, it's a thing. Oh. Uh, new Zach Braff comedy, oh. Alex Inc. Oh god, I saw the for this as well. Yeah, based on Startup, the podcast. Yeah. Oh, just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Zach Braff fan? No, I'm a huge Zach Braff fan. I thought Scrubs was awesome. Yeah, I um, love Scrubs. And I loved Garden State. I thought it was really good. Um, but nothing in the trailer suggests he's evolved as an actor in the last 20 years. Like he's just playing him again. He's playing the exact same character. He he always plays in everything, and uh, and I, it just didn't ring any sort of bells and me that I'd want to see that show. Mm. It looks just far too twee, and oh, no, no, I can't even can't even talk about it. 
Okay, there we go. Well, we shan't then. We'll move on to, in, in, in a year when we've got Star Trek coming back, we also have Fox's addition to sci-fi, which is the Orville. Have you heard of this? Oh, this is the... It looks like Galaxy Quest. The right? Seth MacFarlane yeah. show, yes. So it's sci-fi. One it's hour sci-fi. science fiction series set 400 years in the future that follows the adventures of the USS Orville, a mid-level exploratory vessel. Yeah, it's on Fox. It'll be cancelled in a year. Yeah. One and done. But yes, it does look like Galaxy Quest, the series. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm, I'm intrigued by that. But yeah, you mentioned Star Trek Discovery. Mm. They released some of the set, um, uh, set stills from that. I'm quietly hopeful. Mm, oh, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm glad that Netflix is putting it out over here. Mm. That's a really big shout. Yeah. No, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. As Bones has gone, David Boreanaz has to come back and do something else, and he's continuing with his tradition of playing uh, army personnel and so forth, and he's coming back for Navy SEALs, some new CBS action drama called SEAL Team. Uh, following the lives of the most elite unit of Navy SEALs as they train, plan and execute the most dangerous missions our country can ask of them. Brilliant. So, so yeah, <laughs> that's what Tim Corianos is doing next. Alright, so if Vampire, Diaries, if Vampire Diaries has left CW, what are they replacing it with on their roster? Oh uh, Well, I, I'm not sure what's filling in the exact slot, but there are new shows in the CW, one called Valor, which is another... Uh, U.S. Army one elite unit of U.S. Army helicopter pilots called Shadow Raiders. They're sent on a secret mission that goes terribly awry. Apparently, and that sounds a bit odd for the CW, but mm. that's, that's coming on. Uh, I know there is one further down the list which I will get to, uh, which is uh, Black Lightning on the CW, okay. which is a new superhero one in the Arrowverse. Later. Okay. So they're, they're adding another one into the Arrowverse. Uh, Will and Grace is apparently coming back, whether yeah. you care about that or not. That's a thing. I'll watch it. <laughs> ah, here we go, Black Lightning. Here we go, on the CW. So, Jefferson Pierce is a man wrestling with a secret. Nine years ago, Pierce was gifted with the superhuman power to harness and control electricity, which he uses to keep his hometown safe as the masked vigilante Black Lightning. Brilliant. I'm sorry, I'll watch it. Yep, so there you go. Another superhero show on the CW. Yeah, well that's the thing. It's on the CW. They yep. have such a pedigree now of superhero shows, you just want to watch them. Absolutely. Yeah. Although I, mean, I must admit, my, my interest waned in Arrow this season. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. It's not been quite as good. I, I'm up to date with everything now. and Obviously Legends has finished, uh, and Flash, Supergirl and Arrow finished this week. So we'll have season finales of all of those coming yeah. up. So it'll be interesting to see how they wrap up various things. Curse the Flash ended on a very down note, as did Arrow this week. So it'll be interesting to, to see how they finish off a bunch of these. Um, ABC appear to be trying to recreate The Mentalist with a show called Deception. Uh, when his career is ruined by a scandal, superstar magician Cameron Black has only one place to turn to practice his art of deception, influence and illusion, the FBI. Really? Oh, okay. So another procedural with a kind of... A special consultant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although, you say that, we, we roll our eyes, we'll end up probably watching those shows more than anything else. Cause... Probably because procedurals, yeah. are, they're consistently interesting. Yeah. And um, they have good characters in them. And, and Bull has been one of our favourite shows. Bull has been awesome. We, we scoffed and mocked that <laughs> mercilessly. <laughs> we really did. Um, and Designated Survivor. Yeah. And both of them have turned out to be the standout shows yeah. of this season. Properly eating on play. Because they were awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, other new ones. Uh, well, we've from... got two massive ones for Marvel. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to those. So, oh. yeah. First one is from Fox, which is The Gifted. Yeah. Uh, which tells the story of a suburban couple whose ordinary lives are rocked by the sudden discovery that their children possess mutant powers. Yes, the, so, von, the von Strucker family that we're concentrating on this yeah. one. So they're, they go on the run from the government and they join up with an underground network of mutants. Yeah. We think Morlocks. Potentially, yeah, if it's underground mutants, then I'm guessing Morlocks. Yeah, Morlocks. So um, it'd be nice to see if we get some of the proper Morlocks in, like Leech and people like that. I think there's some crossover as well from Age of Apocalypse. I okay. Think. I think some of the characters. But Leech was in. That, that was essentially Leech in, in X Men Apocalypse, wasn't it? That was the mutant dampener. Mm. 
Or was that Apocalypse, or was that a different one? That was a different one, I think. I'm thinking of Blink and... Uh, right. Blink from Apocalypse, I think, is in, is in Gifted. Um, and Cloak and Dagger were in the Morlocks yeah. as well, which I'd love to see Cloak and Dagger realised. Because there was supposed to be a show of Cloak and Dagger. There is. Okay, so... There's, there's, there's a trailer for it. All right, okay, because I've not seen it. Yeah, it looks really good. Right. Yeah, because I think we spoke about this maybe last year sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, cause I, I, I remember them from the Power Pack series. They turned up in that quite a lot, which was the four kids that got alien powers in New York and had all of the um, Inferno crossover. Yeah, so, yeah but it's definitely a thing. It's definitely coming. There's a trailer for it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that was the second one I was talking about. Cloak and Dagger and, and Gifted is just going to be immense. Uh, also from the CW doing something weird, rebooting Dynasty. <laughs> yeah, so if I can explain his face to you right now, <laughs> this is a face of someone who is saying, what the actual fuck? <laughs> I believe he's taking a picture of it, so we'll, we'll put that out to accompany the, the episode. This is Brendan's reaction to finding out there is a reboot of Dynasty. <laughs> So yeah, that's the thing. Why? I, I, I have absolutely no idea. Honestly, no clue. Oh. Give me a Zach Braff show. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be lying with me to watch that now, aren't you? <laughs> I'll take Alex Inc. over Remake of Dynasty any day of the week. Um, uh, also, another CBS Action One who are really going down the Navy Seals and... and uh, army and police unit this series they're doing SWAT which yeah, I believe is a TV remake of it, the yeah. film with well, the film, Shamar Moore the film was uh, a remake of the TV show okay there's, but, there's, there's no SWAT TV show I'm sure there is the film was a spin off from that well not a spin off but um, reconceptualising right, of okay. the TV show Really, it was Shamar Moore from yes, uh, Criminal Minds. from Criminal Minds. So he ah, left Criminal Minds to do this. Oh, that was another one on the cancel list that I missed, was Criminal Minds Beyond Borders was gone after two seasons. Yeah. Which, it wasn't great. So, yeah, again, no I great. Am, I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and then the only other one is, uh, obviously, the Inhumans show. Yes. Um, which is another Marvel one. Cast photos are out for that already. Not quite the look I was... I would have gone with for them. They don't look quite like the characters, mm. um, but they're almost there. What is encouraging, though, for all these shows, um, is that Kevin Feige has said that there will be crossover between the TV universe and the cinematic MCU. That'd be good. It's about time, but I, I, I never thought that was going to happen because of the differences between the, the people who were in charge of the two different factions. Well, I think Netflix shows will be fine and I think ABC shows will be fine because that's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I think uh, Inhumans is the same network okay so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Inhumans could cross over with each other and the MCU Netflix is more likely to cross over with the MCU right okay yeah I guess that makes more sense rather than the, the ABC shows yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Uh, I guess that, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else on, on my list now. There's another one season one that you missed off that list. Um, Powerless has been cancelled as well. That was the uh, Alan Tudyk show where he works in the, the, the tech department of Wayne Enterprises, essentially. Okay. And people make superhero things. They test that out in the city where super villains are always fighting and... The running joke is that you know, they'll create something in the show to solve a particular villain problem in that city, and then all of a sudden, Batman's using that tech in right. In okay. City. Um, I watched the first episode of it, and even Alan Tudyk couldn't drag me to episode two. Right. <laughs> Very. It was. It, yeah. Wasn't a fan. Oh, cool. And then yeah, of course now now we're we're at the end of. Uh... The fall season now, so summer season's kicking off again in the next few weeks, I imagine. Yep. So we'll see the return of uh, favourites like Killjoys and uh, and stuff like that for over summer. Keep us going. So, yeah, um, we should also be seeing some more Netflix shows returning, Stranger Things. 
That's not until October, is it? Is it not? I thought it was, thought it was earlier than that. I thought it was October. That was due to come out Halloween. Is that so? Oh, that's a shame. Um, I'm fairly certain. But... Okay, could be. Maybe we, we have um, Marvel stuff in August yeah. on Netflix. So that's cool. It's all good. Yeah. Well, that's all for this week. That's pretty much it, yeah. Okay, so next time out, we will have reviews of... The Games Expo and MCM. Yep. I will be reviewing Baywatch. Yeah. Spoiler warning, I'm going to fucking love that film. No. I just know I am. No, um, it's going to be awful. I'm also going to watch Wonder Woman and review that. And if I'm feeling particularly sort of, you know, down on myself, I'll watch Pirates of the Caribbean and watch that too. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I feel like I should watch it from a completist point of view. Well, I think I, I probably will it. watch it. I mean, I... I, I Kind of like Kaya Scodelera, who's in it, because she's from um, Schemes. And I'm happy about them as the bad guy as well. Mm. So, yeah, it's got it's got some pull. Might watch that. Although I do love the idea that uh, Netflix, not Netflix, sorry, yeah, that, that Disney have gone on a big rant about people uh, earning money from piracy <laughs> <laughs> over, over this. So I, just, I, I love the irony of that statement that they put out. God bless them. Um... <laughs> And we will have a crack at how we would fix the Alien franchise. Mm, yes, and, and hopefully thoughts on Twin Peaks and, and other yeah. things that we'll have caught yeah. up with in the meanwhile. Yeah, and as is usual with our show, plenty of tangents and stuff that you know, yes. just gets slotted in there. More than likely. That's what she said. Um, yeah, anyway. Freezing. Oh, I finally watched Archer. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. I've now watched all of Archer. Oh, did you, did you watch the episode... That broke me. Which one? It's the two-parter that is the inner space ripoff. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Fantastic Voyage one. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were in the studio recording an episode of finales. Must have been a year or so ago now, and I just couldn't <laughs> get through that Archer recap. <laughs> I kept corpse in. I just kept breaking and laughing. <laughs> oh, even thinking of it now is making me go. Yes, it was a timely, excellent, brilliant, excellent episode. Uh, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Nerd vs World. I am at Spindly One. Yeah, uh, we're pretty active on there, so get involved, get in touch. Um, if you like the episode, share it, retweet it, stick on a memory card, and force your friends to listen to it. Put it on a tape and, and yeah. leave it in people's pigeonholes. Put it on a tape. <laughs> That'd be super cool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's all for this show. Uh, thank you all for listening. I've been Brendan. I've been Spindles. And until next time, take care and be excellent to each other.